In the fourth century before Christ, the kingdom of Macedon had a powerful king by the name of Philip II. One day, someone came to the court of King Philip with an extraordinarily strong and beautiful horse that he wished to sell to the king. This horse was extremely wild. No one had been able to tame him or ride him. But the king was so enchanted with the horse's power and beauty that he wanted to buy it. So the royal grooms tried their best to tame the horse, but no one could. At last the king's little son, named Alexander, said to his father, Let me tame this horse. Reluctantly, his father gave in and gave the child permission to try to tame this untamable horse. Little Alexander had noticed that the horse was frightened of its own shadow, and that was what was making him so wild. That was why no one could tame him or ride him. Alexander simply turned the horse's head toward the sun so that the shadow was cast behind the horse and he couldn't see it. With that, the little boy was able to mount the horse and ride it. The whole royal court broke out in wild applause at the wisdom and skill of this little boy. The king, his father, kissed the boy and said, Seek for yourself another kingdom that may be worthy of your abilities, because Macedonia is too small for you. The boy named the horse Bucephalus, the most famous horse in history, and the little boy came to be known as Alexander the Great. Together, this horse and this young man would conquer all the known world, all because that child had the wisdom not to be afraid of shadows, but to heed the words later to be said by the great American poet Walt Whitman, Turn your face always toward the sunshine, and then the shadows will fall behind you. Have you ever tried to escape shadows in life? When I was a boy, I used to play a little game. I was determined to run faster than my shadow, to run so fast that my shadow would break from me. I was determined to be rid of that shadow. Of course, I never was able to be rid of it. That is an important lesson for all of us to learn. None of us likes it when shadows come our way. Spiritual shadows, emotional shadows, those dark moments of our life, those difficult people, shadowy people that sometimes enter our life, those shadowy and dark periods we all pass through sometimes. We can never escape the shadow. To my knowledge, there was only one person who was able to be rid of the shadow, and that was Peter Pan. If you recall, Peter Pan's shadow at one point became detached from the little boy. And instead of the child becoming happy that he no longer had the shadow following him, he was desperate to get that shadow back. He was very sad without it. When he found that shadow, he was desperate to reconnect with it. And he thought that by drawing it close to himself, the shadow would automatically reattach itself to him. But it didn't. So he tried to glue it to himself with soap, to no avail. The poor boy was crying. And when a wise little girl named Wendy asked him why, Peter said, 
I am crying because I can't get my shadow to stick to me. Wendy thought how foolish boys are. She told him, A shadow must be sewn on to you. So she sewed Peter's shadow back on to him, and he was once again a happy boy because he had his shadow. We think we don't want the shadows in our life, but what is a shadow? What causes it? A shadow is a spot of darkness, but it is created by light. The only way to live in a world without shadows is to live in a world of complete darkness. When we have light, that light will always cast shadows, and it is good so. Jesus' three closest friends accompanied him to a mountain top. Before their eyes, Jesus was transfigured, surrounded by a radiant light. We are told that the light terrified them, stupefied them, to the point where they didn't know what they were saying. Then came a cloud over the light, and that cloud cast a shadow onto them. It was then, through the cloud, that they were able to hear the voice of God. They did not hear the voice of God in the light. They were not ready for that. It was only in the shadow that they heard God's voice. Life is very much like that. Sometimes we live in lesser lights and we are content and happy there. But we cannot progress, nor can we hear the voice of God in that light we surround ourselves with, that artificial light of human and earthly pleasures, human and earthly pursuits. Oh, we're content in that light, but that's why we don't move on. The 5th century mystic known as Pseudo-Dionysius speaks of a ray of darkness which God can send into our life in order to reveal divinity to us, in order to bring us out of the complacency of the light around us. A ray of darkness is often what shows us God. Just like the apostles, sometimes it is only in those shadows that we can detect God's voice. So let's not be afraid of the shadows that come our way, those dark moments and shady people that can enter our lives. They can be rays of darkness created by the light, as is every shadow. Those rays of darkness can be the very things that lead us further on our journey with God. Do not fear the shadows of life, but rather as that wonderful horse Bucephalus shows us, as that wonderful poet Walt Whitman admonishes us, keep your face always towards the sunshine, and then the shadows will fall behind you. And perhaps in those shadows, in those rays of darkness, you just might hear the voice of God.